Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, our soon coming King. He's our creator. He's our God. He's everything. And without him, there is nothing. Amen. I welcome you to our 10 o'clock online service here at Daniel Missionary Baptist Church located in Tuskegee, Alabama, where the Lord is good. He is great and he is worthy to be praised. I'd like to thank everyone that's viewing us online, wherever you may be at work, uh, at home, at the gym, wherever you may be. We thank God for technology that we can continue to get the gospel out outside of the four walls of the church. Amen. I just thank God for all of you. I thank God for the support that you has given us uh, during these times that we're not able to fully open up our doors, but God's work is still being done. It's still being accomplished. Nothing can stop the gospel from being preached. As long as we follow him, as long as we obey our king, he will continue to give us favor, to give us witty ideas, to get the purity of the gospel out that all mankind may hear it. Amen? Amen. Again, I'd like to welcome you to our um, 10 o'clock online service here at Daniel Baptist Church if you're just beginning. We're now we're going to have a congregational song. Amen? Amen. Amen. Savior in our land. His name is Jesus. He's not dead. He is fully alive. The Bible tells us that he died for our sins and his father raised him up by the spirit of the, by his spirit and he's living right now sitting on the right hand side of the father right now interceding on our behalf. So we serve a risen Savior every day. Amen. 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 Before we begin to pray this morning I just want to uh, thank my Daniel family. I love you all so much. I miss you all and I pray God's very best for you all during these times. I believe God has prepared us for what we're going through right now for the series of message that we, we preached before coronavirus came about, you know, standing firm and believing that God is. When the enemy comes in and touch your bank account, when he touches your hell and everything else, God has given us a series of messages on how to stand. And how to pray and seek his heart. He is our keeper. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's everything that we ever wanted. He's given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. And I love you all so much. And not just on our Daniel family here, um, but all the ones who are watching. Thank you all so much for supporting us in our ministry and giving the gospel out with comments, um, emails. Um, the viewings online, we thank you all so much for joining us. We love you all. And we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. I believe, as the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in his name, over in Matthew chapter 18, that he is in the midst of us. And where two agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done by our Father 
which is in heaven. See, that's why the enemy wants to split us up. Because where there's no agreement, where there's no agreement, that's why the Bible says where two agree is touching anything on earth. So you can have two people praying, but if they're not in agreement, then the promise of the Lord won't come to pass. We all have to be in agreement with one another, praying to our Father, being on one mind, one accord, one spirit, to get God's will in from heaven to be done here on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity today to be here in the household of faith, honoring you and worship you and praising your holy name. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. You didn't have to do it, but you did it, oh God. And we're so grateful, Lord. Father, we're grateful for the greatest gift that is ever given unto man. And that is your son, Jesus. He came to this earth, oh God, to die for the sins of all men, all mankind. And because you raised him from the dead, that we can be saved. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, oh God. Father, we as a church, we confess and repent of our sins. And we ask you to forgive us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness, oh God. Everything that's in us does not like you be purged and burned away by the power of the Holy Ghost, the shed blood of the Lamb, the word of his testimony, Lord God. Father, we ask you to create in us a new heart. Renew a right spirit in us, O oh God. And give us the mind of Christ. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost with fire. Fill us all over again with your precious Holy Spirit that rivers of living waters will overflow out of our bellies, O oh God. Give us the tongue of the learned that we may minister the gospel of Jesus Christ as you have given it to us this day, O oh God. Father, we pray that you would heal our land, O oh God. Just like over in Noah chapter 4, Lord God, when Cain killed his brother Abel, Abel wasn't able to speak for himself. But the Bible said that his blood cried out from the ground. You're the only just and righteous king. You know every drop of blood that has been dropped into the ground from all injustice, oh God. And we surrender all injustice unto you right now in the name of Jesus. Because you know how to deal with it righteously, oh God. We thank you for it all over this land, oh God. We just pray your perfect will be done here on earth as it is in heaven concerning your church, Lord. That you will raise her up, oh God. That we can sound the alarm, oh God. That we can alert your people, oh God, that Jesus' return is near. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Not only saved, but brought back to the right, but brought back unto the Father. That we may do the works of Christ, oh God. Be discipled by your spirit and by your word, oh God. We all need it, Father. We all need it, oh God. Father, we know that everything that's going on in this country, Lord God, riot, looting, killings, and all manner of things, these things did not catch you by surprise, oh God. But Father, we need counsel from you to know how to deal with these things in the land, oh God. Father, we pray for your spirit to rest, rule, and abide in the land, oh God. That Holy Spirit, that you bring a righteous, holy conviction over your people, oh God. We can't convict them, but you can. We need it, Father. We lift up every leader that's in leadership over us, oh God. Wherever they may be, local, state, national, federal, world, wherever they are, we lift them up before you, Lord God. We make mention of them before you, Lord, and we ask you to have your way with their hearts, oh God. We know that you can turn the uh, hearts of any king, oh God. That it be used for your glory, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we let the very sick person that's sick right now, that the doctor has given up on. There's nothing medically or scientifically that can be done for them, oh God. And we just declare by Jesus' stripes that they are healed. We pray for the miraculous in their bodies right now, Lord God. That their spirit of Jesus will mortify their natural bodies. And because of your goodness and your grace and your mercy, 
that will be raised up, oh God, as a testimony for your goodness, oh God. We stand in agreement right now, wherever they are, Lord God, wherever. Your omnipresence, oh God, you can reach out wherever it needs to be reached, oh God. We thank you for doing it right now. We give you glory, honor, and praise for doing it, Jesus. Father, we ask you to continue to raise your church up, oh God. That we will preach the gospel simplicity and understanding and with power, Lord God, from on high. That we build your kingdom in the earth and not our own kingdoms, Lord. We pray that you call your churches into agreement with your word, oh God. That all barriers will be torn down, oh God. That we will work together to get your word done, your will done. That the church will be the hands of Christ, will be the feet of Christ, will be the eyes of Christ and the mouth of Christ and every ability that you have given the body, Lord God. That we do it together in one mind, one spirit, under one Jesus that is the head of the church, Lord. Father, we thank you so much. We know we can count on you, Lord. You're faithful when we're not faithful. And we thank you, Lord God. We magnify your name. Just give us the grace, oh God, to speak against the enemy, Lord God. To tie down every wall, every demonic host of hell, oh God, that's coming against us. Every demonic assignment that's coming against your church, territorial, wherever it may be, that may be brought down in the name of Jesus. They will be released freely to do what you've called us to do, Lord. Father, we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We thank you so much. We thank you for what you're doing right now in the midst of your people. We glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name that we all pray. It's an amen, amen, amen. 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 And before we go into the word, we're going to have another congregational song. Amen. your Bibles, would you please turn with me? It's in the New Testament. We're going to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. That's the book of Ephesians, 
chapter 6. We're going to be dealing with verse 12. That's Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to be, we're going to read verse 12. But we're going to talk about and preach about verses 10 through 19. But our verse that we're going to stand on this morning is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Just want to give everyone a few moments to get there. I want everybody to be able to read along. One more time. That's Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be reading verse number 12. The Word of God reads. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Let me read that one more time. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, mm -hmm. against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. The title of today's message is, The Enemy Within. Let me say that one more time. The title of today's message is The Enemy Within. We as Christians and believers of the Most High God, we have a common enemy, and his name is the devil. The Bible tells us that he is the God of this world. Now, God is the God of all, our God. But for a short time, the devil is the God of this world. He's not only our enemy, but he is the enemy of our Father in heaven. The devil has only one purpose in mind, according to John 10.10. 10. We know that he has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy whomever he can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But our Jesus came that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. The enemy's objective is to kill, steal, and to destroy God's people. Yeah. Some of us he is killing physically. Mm -hmm. Some of us he's killing emotionally financially, he would do whatever he can to destroy our relationship with God, that we won't believe in God, that we won't believe in Jesus, that we can be held bound with him. So his days is already numbered. He and his angels and his principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in his world, their days are numbered. And there's only one place that they're going, and that is to hell. And the Bible says over Revelation that hell will be cast into the lake of fire where there will be torment for all eternity. But before that happens, he wants to take as many of God's people as he can with him. The Bible says over 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that um, likewise, you young people, submit yourself to elders. Yes, and all be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. But listen to this. Verse 8. It says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 
See, we all together as a church, standing together as one mind, mm -hmm. one accord, mm -hmm. one spirit. Mm -hmm. He can't do nothing to us. Mm -hmm. But what he does, he tries to take the weakest link, mm -hmm. isolate them from the church, mm -hmm. get them alone, mm -hmm. tell them they're nothing. Mm -hmm. You will be nothing. Mm -hmm. God's not real. Mm -hmm. Get them to doubt their salvation. Mm -hmm. He begins to inject his thoughts into their mind. His opinions into their mind. Mm -hmm. And they feel helpless. Mm -hmm. It's just like we see on National Geographic and over in Africa and other different countries when you know animals are running together in the herd. They have strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. But when that weakest one falls behind, that's when a lion or a tiger or a jaguar, they come up at the end and snatch that prey and hold them down until the rest of the herd goes forward. Yep. And then they have their way with them. Amen. They kill them. Amen. They destroy them. They take their very life away from them. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy wants to do to the church. Mm -hmm. Now in verse 12 of our text, we have to realize that we have an enemy. Mm -hmm. We have spiritual wickedness in high place, principalities and powers, rules of darkness in the heavenlies. That have come to destroy us. See, oftentimes when we think we're battling against one another, it's not always that. See, in times of war, we must be prepared to fight. Amen. The devil hates us, and he will use any means necessary to destroy us. We have to know that in a war, we're really not fighting against our brothers and our sisters. We're not fighting against one another. We're not fighting against another church. We're not fighting against another race. We're fighting against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this age that influence people. See, if, if your heart is not 100% sold out to Christ, just say 99% of your heart is sold out, but that 1% that is not, the devil can get in that place and inject his thoughts and his opinions and cause you to go another way. Okay. Okay. And we wonder why people act the way that they do. Yeah. We wonder why people can act like uh, animals and destroy other lives without a cause. Amen. Amen. They didn't grow up that way. But when people are taught, their minds are shaped and formed by the environment that they live in. By the things that they see their parents do. Mm -hmm. By the things that they see their pastors do. Their leaders do. Those things shape them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you not know. That a child from birth. Someone can go to school. And be bullied all their life in school. Mm -hmm. And the enemy will use them. Mm -hmm. They bullied you all your life. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for you to take a stance. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to get even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they go on and take uh, authority in police officers, military, wherever they want to go, but they have an agenda in mind. I'm going to get the ones back that hurt me. See, those are tactics of the enemy. See, Jesus, when he died on the cross and rose and God raised him up, and he took all the power away from the enemy. But he's still the God of this world and he wants to use his influence to sow seeds of hell in the lives of believers and non-believers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have to know, I'm not fighting against my wife. I'm not fighting against my children. I'm fighting against principalities and powers, things that are sitting in the realm of the heavenly that can interject thoughts and try to get my mind off of Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that everything that looks good to a man and sounds good to a man may not be God's will, especially if it's done out of a wrong motive. Amen. Amen. We're not fighting against our brothers and sisters whom God has commanded us to love. Mm -hmm. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Yeah. And he commanded us to love one another regardless of the race, social, economical status, mm -hmm. what part of the country or the world we live in. Mm -hmm. He has commanded us to love one another. We deal with forces in the realm of the spirit. 
Like I said, he tries to inject those thoughts in our mind. But the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When an enemy tries to inject a thought in your mind, get rid of it quickly, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Bring it into the captivity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. If we don't do it, if we linger on it, we put it in the back of our minds out, I'll think about that later, you're giving the enemy a foothold to get in and start taking control. The Bible says cast it down, do it immediately so it won't take root in your heart. The enemy can sow a seed in your life at the age of five and that seed may not start coming to fruition until you're a young adult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He does that. Mm -hmm. His trickeries and his ways. Mm -hmm. He did it to Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. God had told them to enjoy everything in that garden mm -hmm. except for one tree. Mm -hmm. Over in Genesis chapter 3, read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. He used the same tactics against them. Mm -hmm. He tricked Eve. He took God's words and he twisted them mm -hmm. and caused him to desire something that God told him not to take. Mm -hmm. He's doing that today. Mm -hmm. He is making things look so good, so desirable mm -hmm. that something grips your heart and I, I got to have it or I got to do it. It's, I don't even have control of myself. Mm -hmm. Those are tactics of an enemy. Mm -hmm. He twists God's words around and causes us to disobey God. And when we disobey God, we're separating ourselves from his love. He tried that same thing with Jesus over in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. The Bible says, again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and that their glory. Verse 9 says, and he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. But listen to what Jesus said in verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Verse 11 said, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. We have to do the same thing. When the enemy comes in, we have to resist him. We have to use the word of God. But if we're not studying our word, not reading our word, and that word is not only inside our hearts, we don't have anything to fight with. We have to put the word of God on it. And we have to do it quickly. If we sit there and think about it and think about it and thinking about it, we come on now. We're being led away like led away into left field somewhere. Desiring something that God really didn't desire us to have. It happens in relationships. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. We're committed to one person, but the enemy started making things look good on another side. And he make you forget what you have. And we go off into left field. I'm not being ugly. But that's how it happens. It happens to the best of us. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. And for the Holy Ghost. That convicts us in our heart. That we can repent. And get back on track with God. And get back on track with our families. See that's what God wants us to do as a church. He does not want church. His children. To be caught up in things he never called us to be in. Mm -hmm. Somebody calls you to be a part of a group, you submit that to God. Mm -hmm. It may sound good, it may look good on paper, mm -hmm. but you get the approval from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get the approval from God. Mm -hmm. Because he knows it could be a trick from the enemy. Mm -hmm. People you associate yourself with. Mm -hmm. God wants us to love everyone. He wants to share our testimonies with everyone. Mm -hmm. But when you build a relationship with people, see, we're in the world mm -hmm. using the gospel to transform other people. Mm -hmm. But I think that we have gotten out and we have let people transform us mm -hmm. and we pull us away from God. Mm -hmm. And we really don't have a relationship with him like we used to. Mm -hmm. We've, our, our conscience has been seared. Mm -hmm. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. There's a lot of injustice in the world. 
happening here in America, it's happening all over. See, God doesn't have just see injustice just for one group of people. And please do not take this the wrong way. I am filtering everything that's going on in this world, in our country, through the eyes of God. I asked God the other night, I said, Father, how do you feel about all this injustice that's going on? How do you feel? How would you deal with it? See, that's the approach that the church has to take. We can be angry and sin not. And we ask God in prayer strategically how to deal with it. And he will show us how to deal with it. I'm not saying that protesting is wrong. If it's done in the right way. But we need to ask God for strategic planning how to defeat the enemy in this day. And when he gives us that plan, then we're to execute it. Because he knows how to do it. And when he does, it's going to be done right. The enemy is using this rioting, looting, and all this kind of stuff to destroy the fabric of this country and to give the church a bad name. Especially when Christians are caught up in looting and rioting and doing things that's not according to God's will for the life. Telling you the enemy will use the very thing that, oh, this is okay. God, God's ordaining this. But did you ever take time to think and to ask God, is this how you want us to do it? Amen. I believe that anybody that has done any injustice to anyone, regardless of their race, nationality, color, creed, should be brought to justice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone. God is only the only righteous judge. He is. He's the only righteous judge. I've experienced racism when I was younger, but I thank God for him to give me to the ability to stand and to see it for what it really is. It's not one race against another. It's the oppression of the enemy to try to get people to come against each other. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Several years ago, mm -hmm. one of our daughters was in a school. I'm not going to name the school or the area. I don't think it's not important. She had a, uh, a young friend. A young friend was Caucasian. They ate lunch together. She's been to her birthday parties and all these kind of things. And then one day at lunch, her friend called her the N-word. She was influenced by her other peers to say, hey, say this to her. And she said, what does it mean? Oh, you will see. Just say it. And she said it. And I wasn't there. And Mary, Mary waited for a while before she told me and my wife about it, but when she did, I felt angry. Because this was during a time when a lot of the other things were going on in the nation. And we wanted to, we wanted justice and we wanted it right then. But God said, Keith, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slow down. Mm -hmm. It was a week later that God showed me what to do. Because mm -hmm. immediately we wanted to go up to the school and we wanted to show out. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't not the Christian thing to do. God said, I want you to make a meeting with the principal of that school. Mm -hmm. Sit down to her, explain to her what happened. Do not name the student that, that said it. I said, okay. Uh -huh. Then my wife made the appointment. Uh -huh. We met with the principal. The, pr the principal was a Christian. We knew her very well. Okay. We told her exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And immediately, she broke down into tears. These are not crocodile tears. I know what crocodile tears are. This person was emotionally destroyed that this would happen in our school. Mm -hmm. And this was a dominantly Caucasian school. Mm -hmm. But see, the enemy tried to use, he tried to use us mm -hmm. to wreak havoc in that school. Mm -hmm. But we didn't fall to his lies. We didn't fall to his tricks. Mm -hmm. We told her what happened. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know who it was. I said, we're not going to tell you who this person was. This person was influenced by someone else. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to let you know what was happening in your school. Mm -hmm. 
teacher was notified. Mary said something to a teacher. Mm -hmm. Did nothing about it. Mm -hmm. The principal said, we're already, things are moving so fast in the area. We're trying to prepare the teacher for cultural change. Mm -hmm. Just one obedient act from God could save the lives of people. A lot of people would may think right now, that's not justice. You didn't get justice. We may not see it, but God sees it. Amen. Why? Because I was obedient. Me and my wife was obedient to what he told us to do. Right. He will work in the hearts and the minds of people. That was not being silent. That was being obedient Amen. to our Father. Amen. That's what it's going to take. Uh -huh. It's going to take us for every situation is going to take, I don't care how big, how small it is, it's going to take us to get before God and allow him to speak to our hearts on how to deal with these situations, especially we as children that are called by his name. We got to be willing to forgive one another. Children of Israel held in bondage for over 400 years. They cried out unto God. He heard their cry. He delivered them through the hands of Moses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 400 years, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. But our time is not God's timing. No, it's not. Bottom line is, he heard their cry, and in his timing, he delivered them. Amen. Just like I said earlier about when Cain killed his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Abel was righteous before God. Mm -hmm. Cain hated his brother out of cause. Because he wouldn't give God the very best. But Abel did. God said, if you do what's right, you will be, uh, you will be praised to. And I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that anger rose up in Cain. Mm -hmm. And he killed his own brother mm -hmm. without a cause. Yep. Yep. Jealousy. Mm -hmm. A fruit of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jealousy. And the Bible says over in Genesis chapter 4 that Abel's blood cried out from the ground and God heard it. Yes. And that's an amazing God. Yes, he is. Yes. So if he did that for Abel, yes. don't you think that, that every drop of blood has been dropped in this earth by injustice mm -hmm. that God knows about it. Yes. And he's going to deal with it. Okay. But he wants to deal with it in his way. And his timing. He's going to deal with it. I promise you he's going to deal with it. He wants us to stay focused on him. I know a lot of people may not be able to agree with what I'm saying. But it is the truth. See, God wants us to take the blinders off. He wants us to take the hatred off our hearts. And he wants us to forgive one another. I don't care what someone has done to We have to learn to forgive and love one another. The Bible says... If you can't forgive your brother that you see and you every day that you see it all the time, mm -hmm. he can't forgive you. We have to be, and I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. We have to be about our father's business. Yeah. We can no longer, as the church, sit silently by and not to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't you realize if you go on your job? and you'll be kind to someone and you continue to share and sow seed into the life, I don't care what kind of devil that's on the inside of them, the seed, the word of God that you share on the inside of them can destroy the works of the devil. He can change their hearts. In a moment of a twinkling eye when they're getting ready to do something crazy, that that word that you share with them can change the situation. We cannot any longer afford not to. The word of God and his spirit is what's going to make the difference. That's true change. When you change from the inside out, that's true change. Saul became Paul. That's true change. A man that murdered Christians, that hated Christians, he thought he was doing the will of God. But when God saved him, he served God all the rest of the day of his life. And he preached Christ and him crucified. God 
can do the same thing in his people. Yeah, when when Saul uh, was uh, when when uh, he became blind and he told him to go into Tarsus, people were afraid of him because they knew the reputation, the nature that he had before he became Paul. But when he put on that new nature of Christ, people saw the fruit of him and they were not afraid of him any longer. Now, Paul called hell. All the rest of the apostles, they called hell. They were beaten, almost killed. But Jesus already told them that because of my name, you're going to go through these things. But they still did it anyway. There's examples in the Bible where God has saved people that were so cruel and ugly and nasty. But they, he got a hold of their hearts and he put a new heart in them. That's true change. We have to be aware of the enemy within. And we have to break the very back of everything that he stands for, that we can stand for Christ, our Savior. Jesus himself did it. A man who had no sin, who was lied on, beat beyond recognition, stripped by his own people, he was hung on a cross by his own people. Now that's injustice. He shed his blood for people that did injustice to him. But he did it anyway. And then when he died, his father, he could destroy us all. He didn't because he had another plan. Our redemptive salvation power of Jesus. Because when he died, he was raised again with all power in his hands to save us and bring us back unto the Father that those that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. That's the attitude that we have to have. Even when they came to arrest Jesus, and I know he's already dead, buried, and resurrected, but thank you, Lord, for taking this to my remembrance. When they came to arrest Jesus, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, attacked one of the Roman soldiers, cut off his ear. His name was Malchus. Jesus told him to put his sword up. And what did Jesus do? The man, that, the one, the very men that came to arrest him, he laid hands on and healed him. That's unconditional love. Healing somebody to come to take your way to your death. But that's the attitude that we have to have. And that's the attitude that Christ, he died for so we can receive. A new heart, a new nature in him. And we give glory and honor to God that we do not have to be subdued to the enemy's lies because we are a new creature created in Christ Jesus. And allow him to live his life through you for today and for the rest of your life. If you don't know Jesus, let today be the first day of the rest of your life. And I'm not just talking about knowing him. I'm talking about building a relationship with him. I'm talking about eating this book, eating this word, reading this word to know your very rights as a son or daughter of the king. So you can use it as a weapon against the enemy. It's yours for the taking. There's no formula to come into Christ. You can do it in your bathroom. I'm not being disrespectful. At work, running, wherever you are, you do not have to be in, well, I need to wait until I get back to church. No. That day may not come. Amen. Amen. Today, if you hear God's voice, yeah. heart not your heart. Yeah. Listen to his word. You know if you, you're not his, mm -hmm. cry out unto him. Mm -hmm. Call upon his name and you will be saved. That's the word of God for the people of God today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.